4.6, a summary of curve sketching. Really, 4.6 is going to be a review and putting everything together that we learned in 4.3 and 4.4, which was majority, the first derivative test, the second derivative test, um, where the function, the slope is increasing, where the slope of the function is decreasing, uh, critical numbers, Critical numbers are where turning points happen. Um, if, if, if you have them, they, that point could not be defined. Uh, we're going to talk about concavity and points of inflection. So we'll, we'll talk about all of that. In the directions here, it's going to say curve sketching or graph, ske sketching the graph. We're not actually going to sketch the graph, but all of these different parts that you're going to see here that we're going to find here this would be really useful if we were going to graph these functions so let's go through it analyze the sketch of the graph f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 4 all over x minus 2 so first of all i'm going to look at this this way i'm going to rewrite this as x um, does this factor? No, it doesn't factor. Okay. Um, so, let's look at the domain. So let's do the domain first. So first of all, it says find all the following below. Determine where F is increasing, decreasing, concaves up or down, relative min or maximum values, any points of inflection. So this is all stuff that we've talked about these last two lessons. Um, the first thing you're going to do for any of these last three lessons, so lessons, so um, the first derivative test, the second derivative test, uh, this lesson, the first thing you're always going to want to do is identify the domain that's going to help you. So the domain here, hopefully you can see, is going to be all reals except 2. Because 2 would make the denominator 0, which would make it undefined. So here is the domain. Next thing, if we want to figure out where this function increases or decreases, we need to take the derivative of this function and find the critical numbers. So to find the derivative of this function, this is going to be the quotient rule. So it's going to be the numerator times the derivative of the denominator minus, or no, it's not, sorry. It's going to be the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. So that would be my first step. Next we're going to simplify this. So let's, let's multiply here. This is going to give me 2x cubed minus 2x minus 4x plus 4. And here the negative sign is going to distribute here through here. So negative x squared plus 2x minus 4, all over, let's keep the denominator the same. Okay, next let's continue to simplify the numerator. So 2x squared minus x squared, that's going to be x squared. Um, minus 2x squared minus 4x minus 2x minus 4x plus 2x these would cancel out 
leaving you with negative 4x. 4x, or sorry, positive 4, minus 4, that's going to cancel out. So now I have this. Next I will factor out an x from the numerator. And there is the first derivative simplified. From here, let's um, figure out our critical numbers. Remember, the critical numbers are going to be where your possible relative min and maxes have, happen. You might call this um, relative extrema as well. So basically look at the numerator. We need to figure out x values that would make this derivative equal to zero. That would be anything that would make the numerator equal to zero, which would be at x equals zero or x equals four. So there's two possible critical numbers. The other place we want to explore is where does this derivative does not exist. We're going to figure that out where the denominator is equal to zero. Well the denominator would equal to zero which would make the derivative does not exist at x equals two. So here are my critical numbers. Now let's do the second derivative. So let's use this and take the second derivative. Again, it's going to be quotient rule. So it's going to be the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which would be 2 times x minus 2 to the first chain rule. You'd have to take the derivative of the inside here. The derivative of x minus 2 would just be 1. All over the denominator squared, which would be x minus 2 to the fourth power. Same thing here, we're going to continue to simplify the numerator here. So before we do that, notice that what we have here, to make this easier, we can reduce that, cancel that out all the way through. This is going to be x minus 2, right? This would still be 2x minus 4. This would be x squared minus 4x. That's just going to go away, leaving you with 2, all over x minus 2 cubed. Now, let's distribute again. So, let's see, this is going to be 2x cubed minus 4x minus 4x plus 8. Let's see, let's distribute the 2 first to make this 2x squared minus 8x. Then I will distribute the negative here. So this would all stay the same. 
this will become negative 2x squared, and this will become positive 8x. And now we can simplify the numerator. Oh, this should be squared here. Sorry. So, uh, notice here, these cancel out. These cancel out. So you're left with 8 over x minus 2 cubed. So our possible points of inflection are at x equals 2, because that would make that undefined. Just like critical numbers, you take the second derivative, find the x values where the derivative would be 0, or where the derivative does not exist. That would be the only one there. Okay, so now we can use this information. Let's first of all define increase and decrease. So here is the domain of the original function. Remember that it doesn't exist at 2. There's critical numbers at 0, 2, and 4. So we can't have um, we can't have an extrema there. But we are going to take a look and evaluate these intervals. Okay. So at this interval, I'm going to evaluate when the first derivative. Uh, actually, it's probably going to be easier just to do this. Evaluate the second derivative at 0. Okay. When the second derivative is 0, if I plug 0 in here, this is going to be uh, negative, uh, negative 1, right? Because negative 2 squared is negative 8. 8 divided by negative 8 is negative 1. So this is going to be less than 0. So this is going to be concave down. Concave down, it's going to be like that. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, let's see right here. Test this one. We won't test this one because concavity doesn't come into play there. Because that point doesn't exist. Here... I have four, if I plug 4 there, that's going to be positive, so this is going to be greater than 0. So this is going to be concave up. Which means, if this is concave down, uh, we're going to have a relative max at x equals 0. Also, this interval here, if this is concave down, this would have to be increase. This would have to be decrease slope, right? Increase slope, decrease slope. If this is concave up. At this point here, we're going to have a relative min at x equals 4. This is going to be decrease, and this would be increase over that interval. I'm going to pause this video and finish this up on the next one.